y'all. Welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Channel. I'm Darren, and today we're going to cook some top round steaks. Uh, top round is one of my favorite meats to sous vide and grill, uh, just for the fact that top round is normally very tough meat to grill. Uh, if you try to cook it on the uh, uh, any kind of grill, just grill it up. Uh, it's very tough. You got to cook it a certain way. You got to usually you got to you know either braise it or you got to slice it a very thin a certain way in order for it to be uh, tender enough to eat. That's uh, so what they make, you know, a lot of times they'll make a London broil out of it. But uh, between chuck roast and top round, they're both very tough meats. But I love the sous vide because actually you can cook them 24 hours in the sous vide and it'll make them as tender as a filet. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to actually cook these for tomorrow night's dinner. So I've got a pack that I just took out of the freezer. I like to uh, buy these at Costco in bulk, and then I vacuum seal them, and then throw them in the freezer. I season them, throw them in a vacuum sealer, throw them in the freezer, and I'll drop them right in the sous vide bath. So that's what we're gonna do today. These will be for dinner tomorrow night. I got the sous vide going at 135, and we're gonna do 26 hours, because these are frozen, and they're kind of thick, so I wanna give it a little bit of extra time in the bath to uh, thaw out. But uh, I'm gonna throw these in, I'm gonna put my, uh, rack on top of them to keep them from floating then I'm going to put the lid on and we're just going to sit them here and let them sit for 24 26 hours so I'll see you back tomorrow throw them down like I said I'll put the rack on just in case they start to float I usually don't have a whole lot of problem with beef like tough beef like this floating because there's not a lot of fat to make it float but I'll put a rack on them just in case just to keep them down under the water and I'll throw my makeshift lid on keeps the evaporation down and then we will see you tomorrow and we'll throw these on the grill for dinner hey guys um, the top round is about ready to be uh, done in the uh, sous vide got about another 15 minutes before that's going to be done so I'm going to go ahead and light my uh, acorn junior here got lump charcoal in there. I got my fire, fire starters already in place and I'm just going to get this fire lit. It's not going to take very long for this to uh, get up to five or six hundred degrees. So I'm going to let these fire starters get it, get the charcoal up and running. And hey y'all. The uh, sous vide just went off. So it's right at 26 hours at 135 and as you can tell I don't have a whole lot of water loss in there. So I'm going to go ahead and take off my floating cover of wine corks. I'm just going to show you how it's looking down in there. Still have my rack in there. We haven't lost very much water. So, 135, you don't really lose a whole lot, but that, uh, that little wine cork uh, cover helps it out. So, I'm going to go ahead and shut this off and pull the uh, top round out of there and we'll pat it dry. I'll see you back here in there. Alright, guys. I pulled the uh, top rounds out of the sous vide and you can see they don't look real pretty right now they're uh, uh, kind of splotchy looking kind of dark and a lot of the reason of that darkness is I uh, before I put them in the freezer when I cut them up when we bought them I went ahead and um, put a rub on them and usually what I do with top run is I'll use my steak rub which I have a little bit of black uh, espresso coffee in it. So that's why it kind of looks the way it does. So I'm gonna go ahead and pat these dry real good. I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands real quick. Dry them off. I'm going to take some more of my steak rub, which has got coffee in it, put it back on there. Before we go ahead and sear, Ahead and flip these. And when we sear these, I'm going to sear them in beef tallow so that it gets that beefy taste back into them. Yeah, not a whole lot. I'm just going to put a little coating of the steak rub on there. Wash my hands again. Get any of that juice off of there. And this, too, I want to show you this is the bag juices that came out of there. Um, a lot of times you can make a, a, a good pan sauce with this, a nice gravy. I'm not going to do that tonight for, uh, we got church tonight, so I don't have a whole lot of time. 
Just gonna throw these on the grill and grill them up to a good medium, medium rare doneness. But I just wanted to show you that uh, the bag juice is really good for making sauces, so. All right, I will uh, take it out to the grill and I'll bring you out there in a minute. All right, guys, it's been about 15 minutes since I lit, lit the grill and uh, it's pushing right there at 500. I'm gonna go ahead and lift this up. I'm gonna go to put, ooh, put my pan on and I'm gonna put my beef tallow in. Like I said, this is uh, beef tallow that I uh, rendered down from the last brisket cook I did. I'm gonna put a good liberal amount in there because you want it to be able to coat the beef. I'm gonna put some in there so you can get a good sear, okay? Then I'm gonna put the top down on the grill and let that come back up to heat. Give that another two or three minutes to get back up there. We'll get back up to 500 and then we'll throw the uh, top round on. And I'll be back with that. All right, it's back up to around five, 600 degrees. Got the tallows all melted and bubbly. I'm gonna go ahead and throw these top rounds in. And we're only gonna sear it for a couple minutes on each side. And you hear that searing going on there. Just like frying bacon. And I'm gonna close the lid just so that heat can stay in on the grill. I'm gonna let these sear for a couple minutes and then we'll turn it back over and I'll be back. All right, guys, it's been about a minute and a half. We're gonna go ahead and turn these over. Keep them still sizzling. And we're gonna give them about a minute and a half on this side and then we're gonna turn them back over for another quick sear. brown over there. All right, we'll close it up and we'll see you another minute. All right, go ahead and take these off. They are done. Really good crust on that one. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and take these off, and then I'll show you how we're going to plate these up. Be right back. All right, guys, I got these off the grill, and look at that. Look at that nice crust on there. I'm going to pull one of these off and show you what we got it at here. Show you that we're still right at a good medium, medium rare on a top round that's been cooking for 26 hours and then the nice quick sear on it we're going to chop these up and have them for dinner so thanks for watching uh, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the youtube channel make sure you follow us on facebook on our group and follow us on our facebook All right, page guys, now this is the reason why i like to do top round at 24 26 hours at 135 because i can actually put my knife right through it without having to uh chop it real hard so it's real tender it's almost as tender as a filet mignon so i can put my knife i can actually even cut it up with my fork if i wanted to so hard to do that any other way with uh, top round or even chuck roast so to where it's still medium rare so uh, i'm gonna go ahead and eat up but uh, thanks for following Watch us on uh, YouTube, follow us on Facebook, and we'll see you again. Thank you, and good night. And don't let the bed bugs bite. Look, there's Spencer. Some real tasty water. There's Spencer eating his steak and drinking water. Ooh, and eating salad. He's being good.